representing linear relations. So again, this is a little bit of review for you, right? You did this in grade nine, but this is a warm up for you to get ready to solve e systems of equations, which we will be doing very shortly. So let's take a look at the ways that you can represent a linear relation. And again, you could use tables of values, you could use graphs, you could use equations, and you could also use a graphing calculator, but we're not going to focus on that. We want to see that you can re represent it on your own. So how do you determine if an ordered pair is on the line? So let's say I gave you this equation of a line. How do I know it's a line? It's a degree of 1. I could rearrange this into y equals mx plus b format. And if I asked you, is the point 0 minus 6 on this line? So in order for a pair, an ordered pair, or the coordinates to represent a point on this line, it has to satisfy the equation. You might hear your teacher say, does this satisfy the equation? So what does she mean when she says satisfy it? Satisfying it means if I plug in x is 0 and y is minus 6, will the left side be equal to the right side? In other words, if I plug in these two values over here, will I get 12, positive 12? So you would test it. So you'd say, well, 3 times 0 minus 2 times minus 6 is that equal to positive 12? And it is because this is 0 plus 12. So I get 12 equals 12. And therefore, yes, it is on the line. Now, as with the previous lesson, we found the um, x-intercept as well. And remember, what you do is you cover up the y value to find x and the x value to find y, being very careful not to forget about the sign that is in front of the um, coefficient of the variable. So this is minus 2. That's why we ended up with a minus 6. So if I cover this one, I'd have 3x equals 12. So divide both sides by 3, and I would say x equals 4. So is 4 0 on the line? Well, it better be, because I just told you it's an x-intercept of the line. So let's try. So we do 3 times 4 minus 2 times 0 equals 12. And I get, again, 12 equals 12. And yes, it is on the line. So I'm sure you can think of many, many points that are not on the line. Let's try um, the point 1, 2. Is 1, 2 on the line? Well, I would say 3 times 1 minus 2 times minus 2 is equal to 12. And that would give me 3 plus 4, 7 is not equal to 12. So therefore, 1, 2 is not on the line. So often you're asked to prove whether or not um, some coordinates are on a line. Does it satisfy the equation? And again, all that means is, does it make the left side equal to the right side? Okay, so let's do some representing here, and we're going to do three different word problems. The first one says, Jeanette has $15 to buy cupcakes and cookies at the school's bake sale. Cupcakes are 75 cents and cookies are 25 cents. How many cupcakes and cookies can she buy? You're probably saying, oh, I did so many of these in grade 9, I know exactly how to do that. Great. So let's take a look here. So I made up a little table, and you can see I kind of did 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 8, 12, 16, 20. Obviously, I don't want to graph every single combination. I'm just trying to get an idea of the graph. So if she doesn't buy any cupcakes, zero cupcakes, she has $15. So if she buys zero cupcakes, that costs her zero for the cupcakes. But how many cookies can she buy? Well, $15 divided by 25 cents, right? That's going to tell you how many cookies. So if you do 15 divided by a quarter, that's like 15 times 4 or 60 cookies. Now, if you don't know how to do that in your head, you can do it on a calculator. So 15 times 25 obviously has to be, uh, sorry, 60 times 0.25 has to be $15, and that's how much she has to spend. 
So let's say she only buys a cupcake for herself and cookies for everybody else. So if she buys one cupcake, that's going to cost her 75 cents. And she's left with $14.25. So I'm doing subtracting 15 minus 75, 14.25, and divide it by 25, and I get 57. And you can do that on your calculator. I'm not going to do all these little baby calculations. So what's 57 times 25 cents? That's going to give you 14.25. And together, these two numbers add up to $15. She wants to spend all her money. So you can go on and on with this. You buy two cupcakes, that's $1.50. Three cupcakes would be $2.25. Four cupcakes, four times 75 is going to be $3.00. Eight cupcakes is going to be six dollars. Twelve cupcakes is going to be nine dollars. Sixteen is going to be twelve dollars. And twenty is going to be fifteen dollars. And then if you fill in the rest of the table, I'll fill it in quickly for you, but you can do this on your own. All you're doing is subtracting this amount from fifteen dollars and then dividing by 25 cents. So 51, 48, 36, 24, 12, and zero. And the costs, um, 1350. I did this earlier, I'm not doing this in my head. I'm not that fast at math. I am old, you know, um, $9. And then I didn't even fill those ones in. I got $3. This has to be 6, right? Because 9 and 6 have to be. These are all going to be 15. And this is going to be... She doesn't buy any cookies. She doesn't pay anything for them. Okay, so there's my table of values. And it's not my favorite way to graph something because it's tedious. Right? It's a lot of work making up a table. So how many cupcakes and cookies can she buy? Well, if she spent all her money on cookies, she could buy 60 cookies. So on my X and Y axis, you could do this either way because they're not really dependent on one another. They're just numbers that you're buying. So if she bought 60 cookies, she spent all her money. And the other option is to buy 20 cupcakes and there's all her money there. Now we could look at, let's say at four, it was um, if she bought four cupcakes, she had 48. So it'd be a little dot about here. If she had eight, she had 36. I'm trying to be as exact as possible. Probably better to uh, put it on a line like this, right? And that way I'd be more certain that I would meet up with this one. So you get the idea. You've got a line, it's going like this, but you can't join the dots here because you can't buy half of a cookie or half of a cupcake. You have to buy the full number of cookies. You have to buy whole cookies and whole cupcakes. So when I was at four, let's see, I was uh, 48. Um, my line is over a little bit. I should have been over here a little bit more, right? So you can see I'm going to be like this, like this. 12 was 24 cookies, so about here. 16 was 12, that's about here. So you end up with a series of dots. And again, you can't join them because it's like saying, I want to buy two thirds of one cupcake and I'll take one third cookies or something. So you cannot join them. Okay. So let's move on to another word problem, and this time it is one about bicycles. So Escape Bike Tours rents e-bikes at $75 a day. So e-bikes, $75 a day, and e-scooters, have you tried them? They're fun, $50 a day. Total rental charges one day were $1,800. What is the greatest number of e-bikes that could have been rented? the greatest number of e-scooters that could have been rented, 
write an equation and draw a graph to show the possible combinations. Okay, so if we only rented e-bikes, that would be like me saying I paid, I spent $1,800 and each item cost me $75. So every rental cost me $75. How many can I buy for $18? So for e-bikes, all you have to do is divide 1800 divided by $75. So make sure you have the same units. 1800 divided by 75 would be 24. And e-scooters, if I only bought e-scooters, then I would be paying $50. This is the same thing as doing the cookies, right? Cookies and muffins. So if I do 180, 1800 divided by 50, I get 36. So this is the maximum number, maximum number of e-bikes. So if I only sold e-bikes, I could have bought or rented 24 of them, and that would come out to $1,800. And this is the maximum number of e-scooters. So just like with the cookies and muffins, when I draw a graph of this, I can't connect the dots, right? You cannot connect the dots because you can't rent half a scooter or half a bicycle. You have to rent the whole thing. So on your graph, what you want to do is you want to have number of scooters, scooters. So if I spent all my money on scooters, I could rent 36. So let's put this as 36 right here. And if I only rented bicycles, I would have had only 24. So this is the number of e-bikes. So again, the numbers that we have along here are going to be points on a line. They will satisfy the equation. What would be the equation that we would write for this? An equation. So let's say let x represent, always give a statement, right? Let x represent the number of e-bikes. Let y represent the number of e-scooters. Okay, so that means the total cost, the cost C, well, let's write it as an equation like this first, and then we'll put in our cost. The cost is 24 e-bikes, so 24, sorry, $75 for an e-bike, so 75x plus 50y. That's my total cost, so the number of e-bikes that I rent and the number of scooters that I rent. In this case, this equation for this particular line is $1,800 equals 75x plus 50y. And there's my equation. Okay, so the last problem, a little bit different because we have a commission and we have salary. So Ariane earns $1,200 per month plus 3.5% commission on total sales. So whatever she sells, she gets 3.5% of the sales. Create an equation. Okay, so let's create an equation for her, her um, salary and we'll call it um, pay. Let P equal pay. Let P equal pay her paycheck. Okay, and let x represent, what do we need? What is our unknown here? Well, this is a constant, right? She gets this every month, no matter what she sells. But the three and a half percent is commission on total sales. So let's x represent total sales. It's not the commission because the commission will be this number times the sales, right? So her pay is going to be equal to, 
She gets $1,200 a month even just for going to work every day. And she gets, now this is where it gets tricky because 3.5%, you know that means 3.5 out of 100%. Per cent, per cent, parlez-vous français, cent is 100, right? Out of 100. You don't want to get 3.5 out of 100 on any test. So as a decimal, that's 0.035. If you can't do that in your head, you should be able to. We're just moving the decimal two places to the left, right? Boom, boom. So her commission, 0.035x. So that's how much money she makes per month. Pay per month, we should have said. And total sales per month, because we're looking at a salary. So it says last month she earned this amount, that's her pay, and she had this amount in sales. Is the pay correct for this amount of sales? How do you do that? Well, we're plugging in an X value and we're getting the P values. So that's kind of like X and Y, the coordinates. So when X equals 96174 is P equal to 4566.09. That's what they're actually asking you, right? They want you to plug these values in. It's like testing whether or not coordinates are on a line. That's all you're doing. So P equals, so let's see if they're right. So we have 1,200 plus 0 0.035 times her sales were 96174. So you get out your trusty calculator Mine says get new batteries in this before it dies. So I'm going to do 1,200 and I'm going to add 0 0.035 times 96174. And I get 456.09. So that means that they calculated her pay properly. 4566.09. And yes. Her pay was correct. So that's the end of linear relations, representing them. Pay was correct. Can't talk and do two things at the same time. So her pay was correct. This is the end of our linear relations represent representation. So we've done three different word problems and it's going to get a little harder as we try to solve a system of equations coming up very soon. Hope this helps you out and helps you to remember what you did back in grade 9. Bye for now and don't forget to subscribe. The more subscribers I get, the more people will be directed to the site and the more people I can help. Bye for now.